Welcome to my presentation on evaluating an existing youth sport or physical activity program. My name is Michaela Kleisinger and I will be working with Free Play for Kids. As defined by Holt et al, positive youth development is an asset building approach to youth development research and practice that emphasizes enhancing strengths and developing potential in all youth. Programs that are designed to promote PYD typically include three major factors. Positive and sustained relationship between youth and adults, activities that build life skills, and opportunities for youth to use both life skills as participants and leaders in community activities. PYD can be developed in part through sport activity, which has been associated with higher rates of learning experiences such as self-knowledge, emotional regulation, and physical skills, as well as increased contributions to communities once PYD has been established. Due to these factors and the defining features of PYD laid out above, I have chosen to analyze the Free Play for Kids program in Edmonton for this presentation. More specifically, this presentation will focus on the extent to which Free Play for Kids promotes PYD. I selected this program for a few reasons. First, I met the operations manager of Free Play for Kids, Brandon Brock, through a personal connection and loved how passionate he was about the work they were doing. You will see Brandon talk about his love for the program throughout the presentation. When we met, he spoke extensively about the program and how they were helping to remove barriers for kids all over the city. When this presentation was assigned, I immediately thought of the passion he had shared and I looked into the program to find out more information. Once I was researching this program and what they stood for, I realized that more people needed to know about the amazing work they are doing. I was shocked at how well organized and thought out the organization was to include everything their participants would need and to remove barriers for that participation. As you can see here, Sport has been a huge part of my life since I was very young and back when I definitely did not know how to shoot a basketball. I was so privileged that I didn't worry which sports I could play or if I would have access to any of them. My parents provided me with every opportunity I could imagine, with no concern for cost, transportation, or any other possible barriers. My father also works for Kidsport, another company who provides sporting opportunities to kids who do not normally have the access. I became glaringly aware that sport had such a profound and positive impact on my life and not everyone was lucky enough to have the same experience. When I saw how Free Play for Kids was working to remove barriers for less privileged children, I immediately wanted to learn more. Free Play for Kids is a totally free after school club for 4,000 kids in need in the Edmonton area. More specifically, they have strategically partnered with highly socially vulnerable schools in the city of Edmonton to provide sports programming for children in grades 3 to 6. Their mission is to provide vulnerable kids with the opportunity to play a safe, accessible and inclusive environment at no cost to them or their families. Because when kids are empowered through play, their families, their schools and their communities are empowered as well. The free play program runs from October to June and children will participate year round playing four different sports, soccer, basketball, ball hockey and flag football. Equipment and registration are free, transportation is organized and paid for, and they get picked up from their school right after class. This program includes weekly practice and games, a brand new jersey and shorts to keep, equipment to play with, positive mentors, and experienced coaches. Youth in grades 7 to 12 can then continue with free play by participating in their Pathway to Leadership program. This program provides youth with the opportunity to work, train, and play with highly experienced senior coaches. Each week, youth will get real work experience as a referee or coach in the free play based program. All youth will be provided with free transportation from their school to the games and back, plus they will receive an hourly wage for the work put in. By gaining work experience and certifications, they will be qualified to work beyond the program. Youth will receive leadership training and work towards officially recognized certifications in first A's, refereeing or coaching. Certification sessions are organized and paid for by the organization. The focus of this program isn't on sports or athletics. It's about creating a safe, inclusive space where kids of all backgrounds and abilities can make friends, build community, and feel good about themselves. It's also about helping to improve their social, emotional, mental, and physical health. When speaking to Brandon, he highlighted that all of their sessions, online, in person, with elementary, junior high, and high school kids, all include a physical literacy focus and a social and emotional learning component. In this way, they can ensure they're being intentional about helping kids develop as more than just athletes. Fraser Thomas Ayal via Holt Ayal argued that sport organizations have a responsibility to design programs that develop better people rather than skilled athletes only. 
Coincidentally, that is exactly what Brandon believed was the purpose of free play for kids without me prompting him to speak to PYD. As you can see, he said, I love that the organization is using sport to pursue positive outcomes for kids in our community. So many organizations focus on sport as being a place to develop people as athletes, when really, sport has so many other incredible opportunities to help enrich lives, as long as, as it is done intentionally. Immediately, you can see that this organization is working towards PYD outcomes. Holt et al. stated that it is possible for PYD outcomes to be gained through implicit processes if a suitable PYD climate is in place. A PYD climate is defined as a social environment that enables youth to gain experiences that will contribute to PYD outcomes. They also suggested a pathway for explicit learning of PYD outcomes if there is a life skills program focus. As was mentioned earlier, PYD outcomes generally include positive and sustained relationships between youth and adults, activities that build life skills, and opportunities for youth to use these life skills as both participants and leaders in community activities. Using those three main outcomes in order to assess this climate, one would have to agree that free play for kids is most definitely promoting the PYD climate. They create positive relationships between youth and adults through the coach-player relationship, which is not only beneficial for the players, but also the adults. As Flett et al. mentioned via Holt et al., PYD is more likely to occur when adults show that they have the youth's best interests at heart and strive to build positive and respectful relationships. As Brandon said in our interview, for him, it is rewarding to know that he is doing everything he can to ensure that kids who are part of the program and the kids who will be in the program in the future will have the same or better opportunities through sport than he did. Their focus is also building life skills, which was mentioned in both research about the program and from Brandon in the interview. As is said on the Free Play website, through play, they can surround kids with role models to teach them leadership, respect, and commitment. The partner schools see the kids improving in their grades, behaving well, and attending classes so they get to take part in the fun at the end of the day. As a PYD climate and life skill focused program, free play is creating the most optimal environment to produce PYD outcomes. Lastly, opportunities for youth, youth to use life skills as both participants and leaders in the community activities is a dedicated PYD outcome. The life skills mentioned above begin this project and it is evident in the mission statement because when kids are empowered through their play, their families, their schools, and their communities are empowered as well. To me, this is the most impressive part of the program. They have not only thought of the children who need access to sport, but also the older children and how they can use the skills they've learned in their first years in this organization to contribute to their community. While doing this, free play is still providing the older children with opportunities to grow life skills through certifications, resume building, money man management, work-life balance, etc. As Brandon put it, that's what makes them different. They have the best coaches who are paid, high quality youth leaders who are paid, who provide high quality, holistic, intentional programming, which is free. I believe it has been clear thus far that I am a major supporter of this program. I believe in what they are doing to help children and I would argue that I have yet to find a program as well thought out or organized as this. The first strength that sticks out to me is the removal of all barriers for children to play. Although I understand this strength does not have a direct PYD focus, there is no way to get children into a PYD climate if those barriers are in place. This is a major strength that stood out to me at first glance. Second, the mission statement, and clearly the people behind it, emulate what PYD is all about, enhancing strengths and developing potential in all youth. Not only do they provide a variety of opportunities for youth, but they continue to challenge development and find ways for children to be involved based on their strengths and interests. Free play is focused on four sports, not just one, so children have a chance to experience different activities and find what they enjoy the most or what they may be the most skilled at. They also have an adequate amount of time to develop as each activity is run for two months. I want to tie the idea of focusing on individual strengths into what I believe is the biggest strength of this organization, the leadership program. Here, youth who are too old to play sport in this program are encouraged to use their skills and enjoyment to participate in a different way. Talk about learning life skills. I believe this is the biggest strength of this program as it does not leave children to fend for themselves once they are through the free play based program. Not only are they given the skills, they are then taught to use them in the most effective and productive manner in a way that also gives back to their community. I cannot stress enough how brilliant I believe this is. In terms of weaknesses, there is not much I have to say. Of course, we must consider that sport as a whole can have negative outcomes such as exclusion, stress, injury, or bullying. 
These could be factors here, but I have a hard time believing that exclusion, stress, and bullying would occur or be tolerated in a program with a mission statement that exudes inclusion. Injury could be an accident and tough to control in any situation. I noticed that because of the pandemic, children must take the bus to and from the free place for kids facility and be picked up from the school at the end. I know that part of this purpose is to prevent parents from causing stress in the kids' sporting experience, as well as to easily contract tra contact trace for COVID-19. My thought on this, however, is that transportation may already be difficult for some parents. If the facility is closer to work or home than school is, it would actually be less convenient to go and retrieve their child at the end of the session. I'm not sure how frequently this occurs or if it is strictly due to the pandemic, but this may be something to consider going forward. Another weakness I see is the accessibility of these programs for kids with disabilities. Although it states inclusive and for all abilities, I wonder about children in wheelchairs specifically. Would they be able to safely participate in this program and would the organization be willing to rent an accessible bus for transportation? I'm not suggesting that the program does not do this already or would not be willing to do this, but it is not evident through their website and other resources that this is easily attained. It would be interesting to better understand the accessibility of this program for children with disabilities. My suggestions for improvement are twofold. First, I would recommend making it clear whether or not children with disabilities can participate, how safely this could happen, and how accessible the organization is willing to be. For this, I am considering offering wheelchair basketball, sledge hockey, five-a-side football, and vision-impaired soccer once during each session pertaining to that sport. This would allow children with disabilities to participate in the program and their peers to experience how other people participate in the sport world. In my mind, this promotes UID in the idea of helping everyone, not just those who think and look like you. Second, I would like to see more programs involved. My hope is that this would promote even more children to reap the benefits of this amazing organization. After speaking with Brandon, this is already in the works. They are looking outside of their current resources and pulling in community experts to assist their organization in fulfilling their mission. For example, they've partnered with the Edmonton Ski Club to provide free access to skiing, snowboarding, and tubing for the kids. Further along, their goal is to expand their programming into other areas of Alberta and Canada. The objective of this presentation was to evaluate the extent to which Free Play for Kids promotes BYD. I believe it is evident through the evaluation and strengths of the program that this is clear. I also believe that the lack of PYD references in the weaknesses portion of this presentation shows that there are not many elements of PYD absent in this environment. Not only does Free Play for Kids promote PYD, it is driven by similar concepts, as was seen in my interview with Brandon. He spoke directly to the purposes and concepts of PYD without any mention of it from me. I think this speaks volumes that the staff is living and breathing these values, which are clearly being passed along and have a positive influence on so many lives of the children. I hope to work with this program in the future.